ahead and call the meeting to order. And Mr. Kirk, would you be kind enough to give us our invocation? Sure. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this rain. Thank you for bringing us here together, Lord. Lord, we just pray that you lead us and guide us as we help make these decisions in the community, Lord. I just pray you be with us as we go along through this day. And be with those who are in harm's way right now, Lord. I just pray you be with our first responders and all around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You would stand with us with your pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. All right. Has everyone had an opportunity to take a look at the minutes from September 14th? Let's start with you, Mr. Boutin. Yeah, I got a couple of them. They're just little typos. On the second page at the bottom, uh, the next to last sentence says, Ms. Holman stated, if qualified, and I think that's supposed to mean if qualified. About the request qualified with the intended program. Um, and then there's uh, on page four, the second paragraph near the top, it, it's got Kathy, Kathy Vaughn's name in it, or they left the N off her, or normally left the N off of her last, last name. That's all I've got. And, and Mr. Boutin, that is for October 12th, 2023. Yes. Oh, sorry, I said September 14th. Uh, I just had one thing that I'd kind of like to clarify on page three at that last sentence. Uh, it said Mr. Mr. Russell had concerned with external checks and flow of money that was not produced by the city. And I think really the sentiment was, and, and the way I'd like that to kind of read Norma is Mr. Russell expressed concerns that there were no external checks on the flow of money and that currently ODC had to rely only on the information produced by the city. Any other changes, questions? Move okay. for approval with those changes. Okay. Have a motion with Mr. Boutin. Second. second. Have a second from both Mr. Kirk and uh, Mr. Robinson. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. Contractors reports, economic development report. Good afternoon. Let me try to get organized here a little bit. I've got some, some handouts for you guys. In addition to uh, the regular report, which you have in front of you in your packet, uh, and it lists the, the uh, projects, and I'm not gonna go through all of those. Uh, a lot of them have been on there. We're still chasing people down. The new ones, though, at this time are um, that we're working on: um, Project Gastro, Project Molecule, Project Pal, and we are uh, having some movement with Project Legion. Um, they've been in town, uh, and, and also uh, uh, will be on in a, a future, not to be <coughs> too distant agenda with regards to a 312 agreement. Um, <coughs> so that one's moving. The, uh, what I did at the request of uh, uh, Mr. Crow, I'm bringing you some financials uh, directly from the chamber. I didn't have time to sort them out because I was working on a few things. I'm going to start out with a, uh, I'll give it to all of y'all, with the balance sheet. I've got three different uh, things here, and this is um, from September. Is this what's emailed every month? It is yeah. what's emailed every month. Did we it must the, be about last week. Oh. Right. Yeah, do we include the bank statements with it? I, I uh, brought two copies of that and I want to address that in my report. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's just the part that's probably not in the email that's why I asked to bring it. Well, and, and I guess I can go ahead and address that right now. After thinking about it, after after hanging out, just 
my director's opinion and doing this for 25 plus years, I've never included, especially in a packet that's gonna be on the city public website because it's public information, not that anything's being hidden because it's reflected in the audit and in the financials, uh, because it has account number and stuff like that, I just have never put a bank statement in a packet like that. What I usually have told board members is uh, uh, anytime any of you want to review it, how, however long you need or however long you take, uh, you're welcome to do that and we will have whatever months you have available. Now obviously you're the board and you can say, well no, that's, that's not good enough. Um, but uh, we, can, we can provide you with any month you wish to look at. If you wish to have either myself or Renee or Valerie uh, on hand to answer any questions that you may have on any specific items on the, on the statement. We're not hiding them, we, I just don't like to put them in public. Uh, I don't put my own bank statements in, in public. I, I go through them and, and, well now it's online, but I go through them and then shred them. But uh, uh, it was just something I've made, that's been a policy for 25 plus years. Uh, you know, I tell my board, you're welcome to look at any of that anytime you want, but I just, I just don't put it out there, you know, with, with the account numbers and things of that nature. Now, you're, like I said, you're the board. That's my opinion. Um, I can send something to you after this meeting if you say, no, we want to have the, the bank statement. I know we've talked about this before. We require economic development to be audited, correct? Yes, and y'all actually addressed that today. And the auditors review all the reconciliations and they, you know, the auditors go through the bank statements. Is that correct? Yes, okay. yes ma'am. I'm not sure why we want to put the bank statements in our public packets. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I'd rather not have a non-public discussion. I can answer that question. It, it doesn't have to be public. Okay. So that's okay. Thank you, Tom. And this is—I uh, mean, I don't mind budget versus actual. You know, and the thing I'd say about that is we do what we do with all other TPIA subject documents. We just redact the account numbers, account numbers, and things like that. That's done all the time. I mean, I can't speak for every organization across the globe, but in, in my 25 plus years, I've never seen a chamber or EDA, or excuse me, EDO, you know, include the statement. Usually the financials along with an audit were, were good. And I'm, I'm not trying to argue anything. I'm just saying that's just been my experience. That's good. I, that's good. I just don't think it's good business sense to put a bank statement in a public document that's on a website for the world to read. Um, we abide by the contract. We emailed those financials to you last week. All of you have them. If you're not getting them, you can let me know, but we've had this discussion numerous times. Um, you can copy them. You can read them on your own. Um, so when Tom told me that he had heard from you and you wanted him to bring the copies, plus the bank statements today, Again, I don't think any other contractor is having to bring their financials with them or bring their bank statements. I'll refer you to Motran. They provide those every month. It, and he does. He does. I, don't, I don't know that it's in his contract, Thank but you, it's so not in our good. contract. I appreciate it. Thank you. I, I do have a question for maybe Mr. Bernal or, or, or uh, uh, Mr. Beckmeyer, because as I understand it, like the city's not, not their necessarily their bank statement, but their check register is actually required to be uh, online somewhere you know, so that people can look at the actual transaction flow out of the, uh, the, the checks that are written from the city's accounts. Is that what I'm remembering correctly? Yes, that's part of Yes, that's part of And, and like I said in the beginning, y'all are the board. I, I just, I'm, as a practitioner, I'm offering my opinion. Um, 
I can tell you what my wife usually thinks of my opinion, if you want to feel the same way. But uh, uh, it's not something that, that has actually been requested in my past. But um, uh, the reason, and I know Motran puts theirs in their packet, the reason we had always emailed it is because that was uh, in the contract from the city at their request. We email, I forgot how many people, I know we emailed the council, the mayor, or as part of the council, city manager, um, legal, and, and uh, a, a number of others. And so if y'all needed to go to more people, if you need us to bring a hard copy, I think we discussed, I'll, br I'll start bringing a hard copy each, each I would month. Just instead of it being emailed to everybody, be in the packet, because the packet's part of the, the public, public information. Okay. It's yeah. part of the public record, it's in the packet. If it just goes to us, it's not part of the public so, packet. So, so, so why let's, let's, let's just put it in the packet. Yeah, why don't we just amend the contract? Yeah, so that, that will that will call for. And, and I, apologize. I thought it was in the contract that they provide. No, it is. It, it it's in email, correct? You, I've got a copy of the contract here. It's, it says that we're supposed to email it. I think it would be better to put it in the contract. I don't think it would be an objection to that. You know, yeah. just so it's part of the public information. Yeah, let's just amend the contract. That's yeah, that's easy. We're, okay. Well, we'll do that and bring that back. Then. Good suggestion. Thank you. Go ahead, son. Um. I mentioned the projects. Uh, let me get back to my page real quick. I got a lot of paperwork up here. Um, Molecule, I think we talked about it last month. I won't get into that. It, it is a $100 million investment <coughs> minimum at least. Uh, it was funny, we were talking in compliance the other day. I think Larry was there, I know Chris was. Uh, a lot of our projects are coming in kind of, their, their requests are kind of lowballing lately. I don't know what that is if they're not, especially with labor, looking at payroll. Um, some of them, I guess, don't have they're not familiar with, with wages out here in the Permian Basin. Um, and I mentioned about Legion and that's moving forward. Uh, let me see here, you see after that, uh, BR&E visits. Um, I don't think it's on here, but uh, uh, I will mention we have a new hospital that opened up today. And I forgot the name, I met, I went out and met with them yesterday. What was it, Tracy? Advanced Medical. Actually, I think I got his card. This is in surgery center down there yeah right and so that's going to be uh met the uh gentleman who's running it real nice gentleman uh paul cordaway it's advanced odessa hospital and clinics and they actually target personal injury uh and, and you may say oh, personal injury all of that because there's nothing here uh really to, to service that specifically in odessa uh, what I found out talking to him, the personal injury attorneys are actually directing their clients to Dallas Fort Worth. And so you're seeing one of two things on that is uh, people who need um, health care and, and there's an arrangement through a personal injury lawyer, they're, they're going to get that in Dallas Fort Worth. Or because they don't want to make the drive, they just don't get the health care they need. And, and so um, uh, he, he seems to think this will be a very good market for them and it's going to keep, uh, in his estimate, literally millions of dollars here in the community rather than let it go to DFW, which is a good thing. Are they part of a chain or a... It's, uh, the owner is a physician out of Houston. He's got, I want to say, five of these. Um, I know he's got one, in, obviously there's one in Dallas, uh, there's one in Houston, or maybe I think there's two two in Houston, possibly I think San Antonio. Um, so they, they've been in business a while. They've, he told me the business plan, he said we have to uh, be capitalized fairly well. If you're familiar with personal injury, you may not see the money for three years. Um, and I, I know my, my uh, I had a family member go through that and, and it took three years and two months before they got their, their payment after getting hit by an 18 wheeler. And so these folks seem to know the business. They know uh, uh, how to negotiate and work with, with their, their a lot of the relationships they're making with personal injury attorneys. So. Um, all kinds of niches out there. I'm sorry? I said there's all kinds of niches out there, I guess. Yeah. It was interesting. I, I wish I could find a, a, a niche that, that would help me become wealthy. I guess I never will. Um, Moving on, you'll see our, our uh, economic indicators after our, our partner visits and things. We did have, which you may report in your report, uh, we had an Odessa partnership meeting this month and, and lots of good discussion out of that. Uh, 
past that, you'll find our October marketing report with our social media, um, which continues to grow. I hope you guys are all, uh, you follow us in all of those different items. And then uh, a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Uh, workforce, we are knee deep in talking. We meet every Friday at 9 a.m. We've got a workforce summit planned for January 18th, 2024. It's gonna be at the Salisbury uh, Conference Center at Odessa College. Um, so is, it, is that the one that was scheduled for next week? Yes, we were. We realized we were trying to push it too quick and, and uh, the more we meet, the more issues that probably need to be discussed come up. Right now we're looking at a potential half day, um, 8 a.m. to 11.30. Uh, there, there may be a, a push to extend it to early afternoon because there's just a lot of things to address. Um, I'll be, January 18th? January 18th, yes, sir. And so, um, uh, I know Odessa College is involved. We've got several employers already. We've got the um, uh, education partnership of the Permian Basin. Um, they are actively involved. Uh, we're gonna address things like childcare, uh, housing, certainly training, and, and, and part of the discussion on that, obviously we have several partners in the community that are, that are currently providing uh, training and technical things, Odessa College, UTPB, uh, Hector County ISD. Um, where are the gaps and where can maybe uh, ODC, the chamber, other partners, employers, people in the community, where can we help with those gaps and make a difference in what's currently, you know, we're not here to tell them how to, how to do their training, but where can we help? And, and, uh, and so that's, that's what we're lining up right now. And, and I wanna thank on that, uh, Christy and her team at Current Media, they've been an active partner in that. She's been in on every meeting. Matter of fact, she's taking notes and uh, that's been a lifesaver, um, especially when you're someone like me who's ADHD. So we certainly appreciate her team and all the efforts they've been doing. And as part of the workforce, uh, and I found it yesterday from Odessa College, we've received uh, uh, information from, um, and I need to make sure my associations are right here, from the uh, American Association of Chamber Executives, and they're doing a program called Equitable Credential Attainment Program. And they were looking for uh, Chambers involved in economic development to to participate and um, and have a community partner and we reached out to Dr. Williams at Odessa College uh, and and uh, he informed me yesterday that they had had a, a discussion on it and and they're excited about participating with us. It also offers a um, uh, when you do your application a, a, a ten thousand uh, dollar funding mechanism. Uh, I don't have the selection process for that here in front of me but um, we're gonna be meeting with them uh, tomorrow and next week to get that application in because it's due by the end of next week. And uh, I certainly couldn't finish it by then, but I was informed yesterday by an OC representative, oh yeah, we reviewed it and that's an easy one. So um, uh, we're looking forward to participating in that and it's a workforce program. Um, I want to let y'all know on minutes uh, and, and I take full blame for this. Um, we weren't ready to, to have Kathy do those today. Um, and I called, uh, reached out to Norma kind of last minute and she had to adjust her schedule, which is my fault. I, I wanted, and, and I expressed this to Norma, um, I'd rather maybe transition, uh, have Kathy and Norma meet, see what Norma's expectations are. She's the pro that has been doing this for years. And, and, uh, and so we're gonna get that scheduled um, as soon as possible after this meeting and, and she has agreed to help and make sure we, we follow the guidelines and do everything right because I know the the minutes and committee and committee meetings and things of that nature are obviously different than than uh, uh, minutes for Odessa Development Corporation or City Council and things of that nature I know there's certain requirements through uh, Open Meetings Act and, and things and so I appreciate her being patient with me on that and, and we will get them We'll get Kathy up to snuff and she will start at the December meeting. So, um, Talk a little bit, I noticed yes. in the, uh, the BRE section, we only had four visits uh, this last month. 
Can, can you kind of tell me what we're doing there? I know we, we had worked on getting a new brochure done. I think that's done correct. Yes. The, the new will leave behind and all. But, uh, you know, kind of what's our plan and, and, and what's our, you know, ha, how are we fulfilling that BRE type mission? Just cold calls. And we're gonna, we're gonna formalize now the information we're getting with, uh, with the internet and also from the new program that, that current media has. There was some traveling in November or, or this last month. And, and so uh, that was probably one of our lowest months of the year. Uh, but we're gonna now sit down and set some goals as far as how many a week and how many a month so that you have a, a much larger list to look at moving forward and also probably some better information as far as what we gather the information from those meetings um, but yeah th this particular month was was uh, probably the lightest month of the year any uh, any questions as far as what I've mentioned or the financials or anything else Good questions for Tom and we will beginning with the next meeting we can we're certainly have these in the in the packet for you and you so. brought you brought norma and i skip today for i didn't have time today but i i understand when i owe somebody something and, <laughs> and she will certainly uh and she's welcome to text me what she would love that gift for. i did forget one thing and, and i apologize for that uh and i've got the full report of this in the back i didn't i didn't bring it up here but I've been working on return on investment, trying to get that thing laid out better, the best information we can. Um, Christina was, was nice to send me all the, we didn't have a lot of the audits through the years as far as the project audits. And so she sent me um, all the audits that were completed and done and everything that, that uh, their department had. And then I went through all of them and I took these numbers on the project signed EDAs and, and completed or, or under construction. Uh, the ones under construction, obviously they're not, but um, the completed on here are all, these numbers come from their final audit. So this is not pulling anything out of the air or anything like this. This is what uh, whoever audited the uh, project at that time, uh, what they came up with. And they're, and they're pretty, pretty impressive numbers when you look at them. Uh, I thought I'd just share it with you. It's just part of my report. It's not anything to to vote on. I can a, I can answer any questions. I apologize. The um, and we're getting them uh, better. As a matter of fact, I shared uh, with the ODC researcher uh, the summary, these numbers, um, and so he has them to look at. I don't know what type of numbers he's getting from other EDCs. Uh, and at the bottom where you see the ROI, that is just simple math. You may say, well, I don't know if that's good enough. Um, that's taken the amount of money we've received since the start of being ODC's partner back in 97, 98, up until uh, I didn't put in the 22, 23 because we don't know how much we're returning back yet. I'm sure Valor does, but you know, when we don't spend money at the end of the year, we return it back to the city. Um, but we wait to, until our audit so we know that we're returning exactly what we're supposed to. But if you have any questions on this. So, you, so Tom, this is, this is an update of what you did. Yes, sir. A couple of years ago, I guess, or a year, a year ago, or? April of 22. Okay. And, and if you're, so if I'm looking at <clears throat> that first, the first top, the first, first line, the first row up there are completed projects. They've been closed. Right. Um, and, and I will tell you, there's more dollars and more jobs that we didn't include. This is only the projects that our department through the years actually actively had their hands on. Um, there were some projects that that uh, that maybe didn't come to us first. I may I'll give you an example. The 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 um, parking deck went directly, I think, to city council according to what I've derived historically. It didn't come to our staff. We weren't really um, 
a part of that. Uh, there's a couple of other kind of development projects that, that, that went to someone else first um, before it came to us. And so, so we can take credit for this as okay, far so, as we so worked on it. I know that your, your uh, denominator is 15.557 million. That's the cost to the contractor. And what's the numerator? Is it the capital investment number? The 20, that is per capital investment. I, I didn't, yeah. so, sorry so about that, the 27. 70 million yeah. divided by the 15.5 million. That's how you get $505 for every dollar that we've paid the chamber. Actually it's a seven, seven billion eight hundred because the 27 are pipeline. Those are not necessarily, we're actively working on. Ah, got it, okay. Yeah, I'd love to take credit for that, but okay. we can't. Okay, all right, so it's the 7.870 billion divided by 15 and a half million that gets, so for every dollar that we've spent with a chamber, we've gotten back 505 in capital investment. Yes, sir. Okay. And then I also did it on, if you look at incentives, the 79 million, uh, for every dollar that has been sent in incentives, uh, that valued at $98.68. So it's taken the same 7.870 billion divided by the, the incentive, the cost of incentives. Yes, sir. And that gets us every dollar. We've gotten almost $100 back whenever we've uh, provided incentive money. And then the marketing is blank because you haven't, haven't finished that part? I, we had the marketing numbers up until 22, and, and I just haven't reached out because I know uh, the city's working hard to, to fill that department, and I didn't want to step in there and... Hey, stop what you're doing. Okay, so that's information coming from the Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, prior I was getting it from Cindy Muncie, and, and she had all that on a tab ready, but she just pulled it up and printed it out. Okay. Any other questions? So, so that seven, <clears throat> seven billion dollars, uh, if I read this right, that's, of that seven point eight billion dollars, 5.2 billion is Nacero. Correct. And 1.9 billion is projects that may come to fruition. Sorry, to our total actual is, is the 770. Well, 1.9 are, are uh, some of that obviously is already under construction with uh, with 1.5. So those are grant those are grants that have been issued already. They may not be. Yeah, everything right? under the that we're accounting for is either under construction as we speak or it's in development and it has a signed EDA. Um, so you look at GCC, that, that was, if you go by, which we did, what was in the contract, you're talking 400 million. That's gonna be a $750 million project when they're all said and done. Uh, 1.5 was supposed to be 810 million. Um, and that's what they have in their contract with us. But when all said and done, that's going to be uh, slightly north of 1.1 billion. So it, uh, and that's what I, I mentioned a little while ago. Everybody's been kind of coming in with these uh, applications, and, and by the time they get signed and ready to go, they realize they were substantially short of what they could have asked for. So you're so you're the, using the uh, EDA contract information, which is which are minimum. Correct, and that's why on a couple okay, so, of so in some ways this could be conservatively stated, but yeah, I got that. Yeah. yeah. So in, in in fact, the payroll is only for the period during the contracts, correct? The payroll number that's not carrying it out to this company remains here, and we you know we only track the it, payroll for the years of the contracts. If we had the final payroll in an audit, we use that. If we didn't have that, we used what was in the agreement. But it's only for the period. The five year agreement. Of yeah. the agreement. No, it's it's, it's at the. If it's been 10 years since the agreement. Since the agreement, five yeah. Years where we don't have the data. And, and we wouldn't have the data. And 
You know, and that was something else when you talk about BRNA, we, we probably need to go out on these companies that have had a, uh, an agreement with us, especially like you're saying five, 10 years ago, we probably need to go sit down and let, let's see where we're at and then we can give you a better, a better you know, up-to-date number. Um, there's a couple of companies that aren't here anymore. You know, there was a, maybe a merger or something. Um, you can't help that, but, but at the end of the contract period, those yes. figures are here. Any other questions? Uh, I'm sorry, Tom. At the no, no beginning when you were passing this out, you said you provided it to who? You said you provided this to somebody? Oh, a researcher. ODC. Re uh, ODC. Who's the ODC well, researcher? No, it's someone on my staff that I've had doing some research oh, okay. work for us. So. And I apologize. I, I, I just, that's the term that, that I've, I've used. Doing research for who, Jeff? For me. For you? Yes. We've been looking at other EDCs and all, uh, trying, to get a, trying to get a better understanding of how we compare, how we track our performance against other EDCs, for kind of where we're at. So I didn't know you and Chris were doing research. I didn't know you had some. Is this somebody that's representing themselves as they're, doing they're, research for ODC? No, they're they they've just been they're they're on my on my on my nickel on my payroll, and they've been reaching out, trying to trying to gather information. Okay. So how how does it how do they? Get it from other, from other, Ooh. other economic, Ooh, economic development directors like Tom. He just reached out and said, "Hey, we're putting together a uh, it's, it's, a, it's a formulation or a paper. We're doing a, a study of all of the economic developments in the state of Texas that are that take in above probably 15 million a year in income. And that, yeah, and I remember you that, that now, Yeah, right. almost 60." So with those, we've reached out to all of those and said, you know, we'd like for you to participate in this. And so uh, giving them questions on, you know, how do they, what KPIs do they look at when they're tracking their performance? You know, how are they doing? You know, what are their target markets that they look at? For so you're reaching out what to them or are, somebody just paying is reaching out to them? We have somebody that just is paying. Okay. We've done is he saying, I'm contacting you on behalf of ODC to get this material? Is that the, is that the approach? Probably. Yeah. I, is I that appropriate? This board, I don't it? think, voted on hiring somebody to do that. The board didn't hire somebody to do it. No, but he's holding himself out as representing the board. I think you'll feel a little better when I explain the rest. So Maybe. Well, in the end, the, the agreement is once we put together all the information in the report, we agreed to share all that information with every EDC that's there. Because I think all that information would benefit every economic development across the state of Texas. You know, know knowing how other economic developments are tracking their progress. You know, what target markets are they looking at? Are they are they using a shotgun approach or a rifle approach? What are they doing marketing wise? You know, there's there's a lot of information that, that and, can be and used. quite and quite frankly, a lot of the information has just come from their publicly available info, just like we publish budgets and and annual reports and all those things. We've just been gathering that stuff up across the state uh, so that we can, you know, accumulate it, analyze it, look at it, understand what other what other EDCs are doing. I know we talked about that information being gathered, and that's fine. I'm just, my concern is if there's an individual on Jeff's payroll who is reaching out to other EDCs saying, hi, I'm... I'm so and so. I'm contacting you on behalf of ODC. Your concern would be. My concern is this right. board hasn't voted on a person to do that. I wouldn't vote for Jeff to spend his money doing that. I don't think that that looks objective, for one thing. I don't think that's. That doesn't I think the have data, a I think feeling the, of objectivity to I think, me. I think the data is the data. The data, we don't know what the. You know what the data. We don't know say. anything about the process. You haven't seen the report yet. You haven't seen. We haven't I, seen the, the report. The report. Yet. 
part of being able to see and, this isn't and somebody understand that, the information. That sits in, in Jeff's office over at Paul Evans Carpets. It's, it's somebody who Jeff is paying. It's a it's a company that does research just like this. So, in the end, the data is just that. I mean, it's okay, data, it's information. How do you feel about a study that's paid for by somebody with a specific interest versus a study? that is funded by So first of all, I think you're, re you're reaching and saying somebody has a specific interest. I'm saying it has that appearance. It's why does it have that appearance? Why does because it have it's that? one person on the board paying for a study. Yeah, that's fine. And when, and, holding and when it, it out when as gets, being a board study when the rest no, of the board's no. not involved. No, I, you know, my, my intent and goal was to when we get all the all the data accumulated is to bring it and give it to you guys. You guys can do with it what you want to. So you are can, we receiving can, the data, the raw data as received from Abilene in the form that Abilene sent it? We are we are certainly I, I'm certainly willing to share everything that we that we gather. I That's just cool. raw data, finished I'm data, curious analysis, whatever. About the contacts that are being made. I mean, I, I, I'm not comfortable with somebody on a on one board member's payroll contacting other EDCs, holding himself out to be making that contact on behalf of this board. Okay, so why is that? I think it's. I mean, it's, I, I mean I, you're saying I mean, you know, if I there's like if you get somebody clear. that's got a specific objective. The objective is to gather information on all the FLA here's, developments here's to why, show Here's good. first, okay? First and foremost, I don't know this person. Did, did you speak to a quorum of board members to identify this person in this way forward? Why didn't you come to the board and say, here's a company that does these studies. Let's hire them to do the study, and then we vote on it. That would have been an appropriate discussion for the board to have in public. And vote on. And we could have done that, but I wanted to know the data for me. But and you wouldn't have gotten the data for you if we'd done an objective study that was voted on by this board? Yes, but I think the, the whole goal here was not to have the board spend any money. And it, that's fine. You know, that's fine. This, was, this, this, goal, came, this came from a. The goal is this came Jeff from Russell a, wants the information. This came then from the a contact good, needs to be. Hi, I'm contacting you on behalf of Jeff Russell. Please supply this information because I'm conducting the study, not I'm contacting you on behalf of the ODC. I don't guess I see the, I the reason for it. Do you think there's well, liability I, there? I mean, I'm, I, I'm trying to get to where you're moving. I, mean, I feel like I've very here. clearly stated my well, issue. And Millie, and I, feel I don't like blame it. It's not a logical like, issue. Well, I no, no, I, I don't agree with your conclusion. Uh, at all, but I will say that I certainly don't mind giving him specific instructions to do it exactly that way. The point was to gather the freaking data so that we would have enough, so that we would have enough information, uh, that I would have enough information to understand how we do compared to our peers. Well, I think if he works for you, he needs to represent that he works for you. Yeah, I, here, sure. Here, here's, here's my take on this. I, I, I think that in retrospect, had you come to the board and said, this is what I propose to do, the reason that you would do that is because this person who you are employing is representing themselves as representing the OBC board, and we didn't agree to that. That's really, it's, it's really more, if we'd have been on the front end of it, you know, maybe we'd have said that sounds great. Maybe we would have concluded that it, we're, that we should have spent ODC dollars to do it, and maybe not, and maybe we would have said thank you very much for funding this. But I think I think it's a, it, I think there's a, a lack of, to use your word, I think there's a lack of transparency here, <coughs> whereby you've got somebody out there that's putting themselves uh, as representing the ODC board, and they don't, they represent you, and 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 I. I think that I think that's overstepping the bounds. So in retrospect, I would have said, "Look, here's what I propose to do. We'd like to." Have, and we'd already talked about the fact that we wanted to get data from 
all these other agencies. I understand that part. But I think it's the way it was done uh, that, that I would that I would have done it differently. I, I, I would have just come to the board and said, this is what I think we ought to do. If the board didn't want to spend ODC dollars, the entire board could have contributed to the funding mm -hmm. of the study. Yeah, there's another option. And, and, but, but again, this person's purporting to represent the oh, ODC I'm not, board. I'm not guy. sure. I, I would have to go back to them, honestly, because I never asked the question of exactly how are you introducing yourself. Other than, other than as a researcher. Well, it would be logical. I mean, if I'm on the other end of it, I'm not going to give my information to just anybody. Well, so but like I say, the public information. So much of it is public information anyway. Sure. Uh, it's it's budgets, it's plans, it's annual reports, it's KPIs. I mean, some some EDCs do a very very nice job of of, of having KPIs and and how they evaluate themselves from year to year to year, and we we've, we've learned that. A lot of it, and, and not only have the research been doing, but I do I do a lot of it. I go out and look at, you know, their their websites. I'm, I'm interested in what they're doing, how they're doing it, how can we do better. Uh, I've, I've spent a lot of time myself on all that, um, but I don't have an unlimited amount of time in the day, so I was willing to, out of my pocket, pay for someone to help me do that. Yeah, you know, I think that that a study <coughs> like you're talking about and the information. I agree, it's valuable. What I don't agree with is, as Mr. Butan said, the lack of transparency in the way this has been done. It feels to me like it should have been a board decision. It feels to me like something that should have been discussed in a public meeting and voted on, and then gone from there, if it's going to be an ODC study. Well, I don't think it was an ODC study, it was a Jeff Russell study. I, I think that's apparent. I was willing to share that with everybody when we get the data collected. I don't know where the, and, 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 and again, I think the, 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 the uh, conclusion that you're trying to draw is that I have some agenda. My only agenda, to be clear, is I would like us to be the very best at what we do of any EDC in the state. I think that the problem is, the way this is handled, that it's going to be easy for anybody to say, well, you have that right. You have that right. Anybody has that right to. if we had done it differently, I would we could purport that we I mean, have could, an objective you, you ODC still, study. You could still say that no matter what. Even if the board had said, great, let's move forward, let's find a company that can do this and gather this information, when all the information comes in, there's a hundred different ways you could <coughs> buy a study. Well, then, yeah, but, the, I mean, the, but then the board's in it. There would have been a better way to avoid it. Yeah. That's the difference. <laughs> I mean, but the, Really and truly, would, would we? Like, the only difference would be the board said, go forth and gather that study. I, mean, I don't know like if there's any point talking, in continuing to argue so, this. And I agree. So, I mean, do you, just out of curiosity, I mean, and, and what, so what would you like to do to move forward? Uh, it's not a board decision. This is Jeff Russell's study, so I guess he's free to do it as he sees fit. Well, I mean, that's given. But, I mean, it, I guess the question is, is if Jeff comes back with the information, do you guys want to see it? I'm open to looking at it, I, but I, I mean, again, I am, I'm just confused, I guess, about the methods here. I would have preferred that it be a team effort, an ODC effort, but yeah, let's look at it. I'd, I'd like to see, I mean, if say, he's sending yes, out go, emails go, go, go. and he's, I'd love to see the process along with the data. I think, I think what's done is done. I don't think we need to go go backwards on it. You know, we'll do, we'll, we want to get the information for sure. You've asked about that. We, but I think the information is valuable. Any other questions for me? Any questions for Todd? No, I'll take your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Current media. All right, good afternoon. Um, our big, probably our biggest project this month has been the target industry analysis. Um, it is underway. I'm hoping um, most of you should have received a survey last week. Um, if you haven't yet, um, I probably need to know. It should have gone to city officials, county officials, um, uh, industry, utility companies. Everyone should have received it. 
And if not, we're going to be making follow-up calls. I am talking to um, Golden Shovel, who is administering the survey. We're talking tomorrow just to kind of see what the response has been so far. And then uh, we will start making follow-ups on those just to see kind of what the response has been. We broke those up so that different, um, different industries will be getting different surveys. We don't want the education community getting the same survey that the utility companies are getting. So we're going to kind of look into those. And then um, I've thought of some people that we've left off that we're going to be adding to that. So um, we'll kind of gather. We'll get the economic development staff involved in about a week or so just to kind of look at the results of that. And then at that point, we'll have them reach out and do actual interviews where they will call and kind of go deeper into that. Christy, did, did mm -hmm. all those requests to people to complete the survey go out this week? They went out last week. I got mine today. I, I thought I got mine. Really? OK. Tuesday or something. Of this week? I got mine this morning. OK. Did you guys get that? Get this, you know, survey yeah. request? Okay, so they could have gone out. And, okay, that's interesting. But though, they're all so. probably going out within, yeah. within a week. Or yeah, or yeah, but it, technically it should have gone out last week. So yeah, let me know. But I'm I will be following up, and I'm going to see what those look like, um, and I'll talk to them tomorrow. From current media? No, they're actually coming from a golden shovel email. So oh, okay. yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. I may yeah. not recognize. If you have, I'm not sure and and that's part of the problem using a third sur you know a third party survey company. That's part of the problem. So that's one of the reasons for the follow-up. So, <laughs> yeah, so we'll make some of the calls, and depending on, on people that we don't know, then I'll look to Tom and Tracy and their team as well. Well, it, it clearly yeah. references ODC. It does. Oh, and okay. that's, yeah. that's one of the reasons I didn't. Right. I mean, I, I first thought about it. Here's I searched other. everything ODC. Yeah. And it hasn't popped up yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we'll. the good thing is we have a list, so we'll know who to contact, and we'll know... Again, if they won't know who Christy Calicut is, then we'll know who to who to use to reach out to them to make calls to. We got mine so. on Friday. On Friday, okay, okay, sounds good. Um, so we'll start doing that, um, and again, we'll we'll make those follow ups. But um, in addition to that, we're going to go through the people that we think need to get those personal phone calls to go deeper. So I may be reaching out to board members as well, just to see um, if if you guys have any. Um, any thoughts once we get this this first round of data back? Um, one thing too, I, I reported a few months back that we were going to do um, a workforce uh, study as well and a survey. <coughs> We've had a few questions in this survey that, that touch on workforce and with the summit coming up, I've delayed that just a little bit. I, I don't want to hit a lot of the same people twice with some of the same information. So, um, and as we're gathering this, I, um, I've, I've delayed that other one just a little bit. I, I don't want to hit with the wrong questions or over hit the same people. So that one will be coming. I just wanted to mention that too. Um, the website, um, we've added some info to the website this week. Um, the videos that, that we that kept coming that we've been mentioning, all those extra videos, they are all done now. Um, the company that did those because they were delayed, they actually gave us six additional videos at no cost. So we have those. Not all of those are on the website. A lot of those are just social media loops and things like that. So they will be running in our digital campaigns and on social media, so you'll start seeing those as well. Um, I won't read the numbers to you. The, the website uh, pretend, uh, continues to perform well. Um, it actually performed a little bit better last month than it did this month, but it does continue to perform well. Um, Lead Forensics, that's the, um, that's the tool that we installed last month that Tom referred to for BRE. One thing I wanted to mention, um, we're getting great, um, great data off of that. And, and in all honesty, we are trying to figure out how to use it and give it back to Tom and Tracy and, and figure out how to best give that information to them. The report that I had this month for them was 178 pages long. So it's really hard to drill that down and say, you know, th this, is the best, the, this is the best stuff that you need to, to get into and, and learn from. Um, when I went over it with the team uh, this month, there were two in particular that Tracy, one that she had worked with in the past that, uh, that was great, so she knows to go back to them to say, hey, what's going on? You've been on our site and you're interested. There's another one that she knew very well, and I think it's a good one you know, that she knows to, okay, they're interested, they've been on, why have you been looking? But in general, I think the big thing now is to get a report to them, and that's on us, not on them, it's, it's on us to say, what are, what are the ones that are looking at the right things and give them the report that says um, these are the ones that are viable? Because there's a lot in that 178 pages that is not. So we're trying to get a good report to them. Um, on the second page of the report, the great thing about this, we've, we've just pulled out a few things for you guys. Um, 
we're of course not sharing the company names just in case it's somebody that they're talking to. We don't want to get into anything that is proprietary. But the SIC code is on here, the number of employees. We just want you to kind of see the things that we're seeing. Um, we've also got a consultant that is looking pretty heavily. There's a couple of consultants on here. Um, so we just shared a few of those um, that we report, but there's some pretty interesting information. So it's going to be a great tool. Um, we're just figuring out the best way to use it. Um, the digital campaigns. So the digital campaigns are still performing really well. The videos that have been performing were in our third month. There's a couple of them that are starting to get a little tired. We're not getting quite the results that we were in month one, um, but they're still doing really well. What we're doing right now, um, because we've had good numbers, we, we want to keep them out there, we want to keep some momentum, but we want to save some budget for when this target industry analysis come back, comes back. So we're decreasing budget in November, December, and we're putting some of these new videos out there that we haven't run yet. So, so we're going to decrease budget. I expect that the next couple of months I'll, I'll tell you that our numbers are down just a little bit, but we don't want to lose our momentum. So we want to keep a presence out there on the heels of when we start talking to them about these new target industries. A um, couple of other things with workforce, like Tom said, we're um, sitting in on that workforce, on the workforce summit calls. I think we're learning a lot. We're adding quite a bit to our organic social when we're working with Lindsay. We're um, also adding to our, um, to our digital campaigns, to our Did You Know section. Talking to the advertising committee, um, I think, you know, one of the things that I, I think I take for granted sometimes are, you know, that, that our local citizens know what ODC does, and I think that they still don't. So we continue to add to that part of the campaign, saying the, the things that, that this board does. So um, one of the things that um, Jeff Russell reached out about too, when you guys have something that you're doing, putting signs up saying this is what we're doing, here's what we've done, here's what the jobs that are created, putting things up on social and, and things like that. So we've created one sheets that I mentioned, I think last month on, on projects that you're doing that are going up on the website, that will be in social and things like that too. So simple things, but you'll start seeing more and more of those. Um, the oil show campaign, this is something I failed to put in the report last month, but we did do a campaign at the oil show. Um, and I won't have reporting on that until probably next month, just the way that report goes, but we did serve ads to all of the attendees that will follow them for an additional 45 days. So if you were there um, as you were leaving, you may have gotten gotten served in ads, so we'll have reporting on that probably next month. Um, other than that, the full report on uh, the social media and the programmatic ads are in the packet. Um, and then we've, uh, since the report, we've done a year in review. Nothing that we're going to print or anything like that, just kind of a wrap up of the fiscal year that um, we're still going over and tweaking just a little bit, and then we'll add that to the, um, to the website and I will share that with the advertising committee probably either tomorrow or early next week. So, Christy, are you, mm -hmm. I know you're preliminary, but are you yeah. where you thought you'd be? You know, I think so. So I, I really think overall, I feel like we've kind of taken a step back building the website, kind of starting, you know, going backwards with that, building the videos, they took longer than I expected them to. Um, but I think so. I think we've taken some time to really build up the website, the digital media, those kinds of things. I'm very happy with where the numbers are on all of that. Um, so I think we've made good strides. I think we took quite a bit of time to build those tools, and now I think we're seeing the results, and I think that we're just going to see more going into 2024. So I think that's where you're going to see more coming out of us is this year. So I hope that answered that. Yeah. Is there a gross or comparative summary of all of aspects put together, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, for hits and reactions. From where we started to? Well, in this report today, does it have a, a total summary of <coughs> all the different reports? It doesn't. I just did the, the month. I just did the month, but I can get you one. I can so absolutely do a cumulative. Time. Absolutely. So. And, and we've been together how long now? Been so we, we technically started in February. Yeah. So yeah, I can do that. So when we started the website, we launched in June, and then we started our campaigns in August, I believe. So I can do it both ways and, sure. and let you know that. But yeah, we can absolutely do a cumulative yeah. and let you know what that looks like. Might so. be a year to date or yeah. a month. So. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. So, so sure, sure. I think mm -hmm. also, you know, as Christy mentioned, the signs, and this is something that we, you know, I've seen in other places, and, and we see on construction sites and all with contractors and all that. but. 
you know, uh, you know, the, the thing that I think we still lack a lot is just a general recognition in the community at large as to what OGC does. I think there there are pockets of people that know what we do, but I think the taxpayer in general. So, so if you guys have any other ideas of how we can kind of get our name out there, how we can market our name, I'm, you know, uh, just send that. You know, any ideas yeah. you have, Christy, she's Please. great at kind of saying, yeah, I think that might work, or no, that's a terrible idea. Yeah, yeah I'm. <laughs> but uh, any text messages, emails, anything like that, I'm. I'm I, I always want that kind of feedback because I don't, you know, I don't yeah. always see it. So. Yeah, and if you happen to be somewhere traveling and you see something that somebody else is doing, you think, oh man, that's a good idea. You know, take a picture of it, send it to send it to Christy and her team, and say, yeah. hey, we might want to think about something like this. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, what what really precipitated the sign deal was I drive by the Scooters Coffee Corner about 28 times a day, and I thought, man, I wish we had a big sign out there saying that you know that that project is being at least partially funded by uh, ODC grants so that everybody would see it and understand better what our what our tax dollars are, are doing in our community. I think that there are, and, and a lot of things on social that we can easily say that you guys have, have done, you know, over the years that I don't know that we have taken the time to say this project has been done by ODC and I mean that's a tool that we can that we can do and then boost and, and put ad dollars behind and we're not spending much money at all, you know, to, to let everybody know what's been done. So those are easy, easy things we can do. So yeah. Anytime you guys have ideas I'm I would love to hear them. So excellent. Okay. Any other questions for yeah. Christy? All right, thank, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Okay. Black Chamber, Dr. Walker. to everybody. The information just goes downhill from here. It's just it's plain and simple. Not as not as to the magnitude of the other organizations but from where we started to where we are uh, we're very proud of it. quite a bit of our accomplishments our numbers has grown tremendously. And I think the reason for this, the growth for this month, is pretty much because of our Ebony Bar Award, which is this week. So, and a lot of that uh, information that we received and information on those contacts pretty much was pertaining to the Ebony Bar Award, and it, it'll carry over into next month because uh, uh, that pretty much was the hot topic. Our, the, we conducted over seven counseling sessions. And one thing that uh, we're beginning to see, uh, and I think, thank God for more train, uh, I can kind of send people their information. We are starting to get uh, questions to the point, can we rezone? What is this? Uh, so this is a sign that a lot of our entrepreneurs, our young small business people are starting to read the information and it's and it's starting to educate them because they're asking about rezoning uh, a company, a vacant building that may be in a certain area that will have to be first inspected for asbestos, we know that. Uh, can we go in and then they're looking at the cost of what would it take to go in and convert that from a just a just an option, a brick and mortar to a maybe a restaurant, or what would it take to make this something that's comparable to their little small business? So we're getting a lot of those questions, and uh, so that's something that we're really proud of because those are some of the questions we were not getting before. So we're getting that kind of information. So we're uh, we're kind of trying to expand our horizon to the point that so we'll be reaching out to other organizations and that way if we don't have the answer we'll get it to them. Uh, we were able to, uh, we teamed up with Odessa Chamber and the Hispanic Chamber, uh, very proud of this and on uh, the 2nd, 3rd and 5th of October we did the get out and vote. Uh, so you didn't get uh, if you, anybody that plays baseball, two out of three 
you know, if you go two for three, one for three, you know, you had a bad day. But in, in, in the city of Odessa, if, to get one of our propositions passed was absolutely great. So our, our children and our kids and our grandkids and our neighbor's kids, everybody will benefit. So we were so proud of that. Uh, uh, Carla and Renee brought us on board on that, and we worked together and to get out and kind of drum that information. We, we did not tell them, you know, we didn't go out and tell everybody how to vote. We just told them, you have the right to vote, and you should vote. We shouldn't have to make you vote. That's something you should want to do. So we were so proud of that. Uh, we were able to, on the 7th, the Black Chamber hosted a, uh, we were able to do our fall cleanup. We uh, went to two this year, the areas that we, we've been cleaning up. We actually saw that some of the areas had been uh, cut down uh, and have been uh, kept, been groomed really nice. So they're taking, starting to take care of some of the areas that we had started cleaning. So they're not as, it's not as much trash. It's not as many bags. So uh, hopefully we're rubbing off on some people and uh, some people are starting to do some things to help and start to listen to us when we try to tell them, you know, let's keep our community clean. Because when people come into your city, the first thing they see is how your city looks. How, what, you know, what, you, what you're presenting to them. Is there trash everywhere? Is there? So we want to make sure that, first of all, we have a clean city. So we worked with Keep Odessa Beautiful on that. And so that was our second cleanup of the, the year. We also uh, teamed up with the U, with uh, UTPB and the SBDC. And we had uh, uh, an entrepreneur from San Antonio. She's the owner of Alamo Kitchens. And we did a seminar uh, of uh, this combined of Medellin and Odessa. She gave uh, very great information on, uh, she has four locations there in San Antonio and on uh, how she went about it, uh, all type of different information that was very helpful to so many. It was about uh, 12, 13 small businesses from Midland and Odessa. And we helped uh, you, uh, Dr. Shedd and, and Tyler uh, uh, was so kindly to bless us to let us help them uh, sponsor that and and it was very well received as a matter of fact we've had a request for her to come back and do that that do that workshop on a bigger magnitude so it went over really well uh, pretty much we uh, in the process of getting ready for uh, we helped the chuck wagon gang uh, thank thank them uh, Gabe and his crew and Isabel, we helped the Chug Wagon Gang with the oil show. This is our second time teaming up with them as well. Uh, we had about uh, 12 of our chamber members to go out and help serve uh, and kind of just uh, help with the Odessa, I mean with the Chug Wagon Gang to give them some manpower to help serve for the oil show. So we're trying to broaden our horizon uh, we're just trying to do more and more things, get bigger and bigger. And like my, uh, one of my nieces used to say, we're just trying to get gooder and gooder. Mm -hmm. So that's all we're trying to do. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you and have a great rainy day. You as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, Small Business Development Center. I didn't see Tyler. Would you like to speak for them? All right. The information's in the packet. Motran, Mr. Beacon. Well, it's great to be back. Um, the first thing we're passing out to you is a little uh, pamphlet that we've done on the JSX Air Service coming in to Schleymeyer in January. It'll start January the 15th. Just so you're aware on that, that has the two flights and the flight times, two flights daily between Dallas and here uh, as departure and returns. Same way with Houston. And then we have uh, some of our average pricing on that for one way and round way trip or round trips. And part of the reason we want to share that with you, we've been sharing that with several businesses, particularly Exxon, Oxy, Chevron, 
that have a lot of movement back and forth between Houston and in our area. Uh, Dallas uh, come on as well. There are some companies there, but we have several large uh, companies that are doing a lot of flights between Houston and here. And so, and I think with some of the projects that y'all have going on that are also involved with Houston, this is fairly helpful to them. Um, you know, one of the things that we denoted in our previous airline studies that we've done was that we have a pretty high cost of flying out here. Now, part of that's because people are bad consumers and they book 80% of them three days before that flight takes <laughs> off or leaves. And they're not doing themselves any favor. They could probably get a lower rate that way. But in that, that realm, these flights are in line with the existing costs. So you get a fairly nice service for that. And I know a lot of them are kind of enjoying that. So we just want to make you aware of some of those and some of that information. Mainly what we're going to talk about today, though, and it's included in your report, is an update on some of our ODC leverage projects with TxDOT. And we actually have some good news. That's always kind of fun when you have good news as opposed to bad news, unless you drove here on Fogarty. Uh, then it's still bad. Uh, but the first page of these we have are completed, which is, of course, the uh, North Loop 338 and 385. Under construction here we have Yukon and Loop 338, but that's wrapping up this month. So we're nearly done there. It's only about a year overdue, but uh, getting there. Uh, the next one is I-20 in Vaudry, uh, that interchange that was part of the larger I-20 project, and that led at the end of October as far as that uh, November letting. So that project is let moving forward there. The good news really comes back when we get into our planning and design projects, and the two that we had there are US-385 and South Loop 338, that interchange, and then of course the VI-20 Vaudry interchange. Both of these uh, were scheduled for letting dates that were pretty far out. The 338 and 385 South was May of 2026. That had been pushed back because of some funding issues previously. And then the BI-20 Faudry interchange is a January 2027 letting. As of today, both of those projects are at 60% in the planning process, and they weren't scheduled to be to that process until December of next year. So they've made some progress there and moved those up. Because of that, uh, today I believe we are looking at an October 25 letting on the 385 South Loop 330 overpass, and I think we can actually do better than that. I, I think they'll be at a point that's a fairly simple environmental. There's not going to be a lot of issues there. Uh, I think that one could bump up a little bit sooner, and we're certainly going to try for that. Uh, they'll have to move funding from one fiscal year to a previous fiscal year to get there, but uh, that's an important project and we need to move that one forward. That one is 100% funded. The Faudry interchange is also scheduled at this point for October of 25, so that's moving up quite a bit from what it had been proposed from early on. Uh, that one is a little bit more complicated in the environmental process because you have a big railroad there and all those sorts of fun things. But uh, the other point with it is, it is not fully funded. There's currently $12.75 million on that project. There'll have to be another 16.78. But the good part to this is, you know, when we started this whole leveraging thing, part of it is that you're bringing in additional funds. And so we have a project that is far enough along that it's eligible to receive additional Category 12 Commission strategic funding from the Commission, or new dollars outside of what's normally appropriate. So this is the success story of, of what we've been doing, getting things ready sooner than they would have otherwise and allowing us to use those as opportunities to bring additional dollars for infrastructure into our area. So kudos to you. That's what that project is all about. Uh, the other thing uh, on that one is again, going back to making things happen sooner than they would have otherwise. So both of these projects, uh, at least a year and a half ahead of schedule. The last two projects that are part of your leveraging package are the West Loop 338 8th Street and the 52nd, 56 interchange at 338. Uh, both of those projects, neither one of them have, have actually started in that process. I do think there is opportunity to move 52nd, 56th up sooner, particularly with everything that's going on in the loop there. Uh, most of that loop study on 338 is pretty much finished, particularly for that northeastern corridor, and you do have 500000 on that project, so I think that'll be enough maybe to go ahead and bump up that planning process, but we had to get these other two projects 
sped up to start moving other things up to meet them. But again, you know, as you look at those projects between ODC and the city and moving these things forward, I think that's something y'all would have input on what you wanted to see happen next. So uh, that's why we wanted to kind of bring that up to you today. Anyway, that's my report for you, unless you've got any questions. Excellent. Super. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. So on city administrative financials, we there still don't have a, a team in place yet, but they were kind enough just to go ahead and give me the sales tax receipts for the last three months uh, for September, October, November. So I thought I would give you those if, if you guys are interested. So the city of Odessa received <coughs> a September sales tax check in the amount of $5,913,306.55. This amount includes economic development sales tax of a quarter cent, which ends up being 1,182,661.31. That was September. October, the city of Odessa received a total $6,113,085.35, and ODC received $1,222,617.07. Then for November, the city's total sales tax check was $6,099,161.15, and ODC's portion was $1,219,832.23. Any so that's all I have as far as financials, but I thought this would have been helpful. Any questions? As I understand, Mr. Beck, our city has hired a chief financial officer or whatever her title is. Correct. Already Monday. Monday. Excellent. And I've already shown Mr. Crow first thing on my list. Literally, he showed me his list, and the first thing was catch up ODC <laughs> financial <laughs> Thank you. Okay, this is a public forum. Any member of the public may address the ODC board regarding any of its agenda items before or during the consideration of any of the items. This brings us to item five, discuss and take any necessary action regarding the economic development agreement for infrastructure grant with 423 at 423 North Grant with EML home builders. And I know you want to touch on this. Yeah, we probably need to table that. Uh, I don't believe Jeff Moore has signed off on this yet, so we probably need to table it and wait for him to sign off on it. Okay. Was that, did we get, uh, when we, were, we got an email right before Four. our meeting that had this information in it or additional information? Yes, I believe uh, that's correct. I see it, so I'm not sure. About an hour, about an hour we got this meeting right before right 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 this. I, I never did get a chance to look at so that. Means they have to wait another month. Uh, it, we really need to wait another month. We need to get Jeff Moore to sign off on all this. Well, okay, so maybe the is, is there some sense of urgency that no, we need to? No, I was just curious. Jeff brought up how long these projects were taking last yeah. month in our meeting, and so I thought you know like extrapolate another month into something. So, Tom, can you give us a? a, a I know you, we're going to reach out to Mr. Moore. Did he give you any feedback on where we were? on all I of these? Heard from him. I, I sent him two of them because all of them are pretty much the same. It just has different names and addresses and dollar amounts. So I sent him uh, uh, two of the agreements and have not heard back from him. How long has he had those? A day. So it's not been that long. Um, my thinking was, that I think this is a, a, a template the city has used already for these types of agreements. And so I, I asked them if they passed the, the, the smell test. It's, a, it's what I received from the city. We just, uh, the, the ones they sent me had blanks and we just filled in the blanks with the, uh, the names, legal description. I think that um, would feel better with our attorney looking at yeah. it. Would you yeah, have a jury needs to look at it? it? Yeah, Jeff needs to sign off on it. And I can give him a call afterwards and see if he's even in the office uh, and see where we're at. Okay. Well, was there a and reason? Was there a reason why we just got them to them from? Because I think we did all these last last board meeting around a month ago. 
the two dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, a couple of things. One, it was uh, it was our office's first time. I kind of treated him like we do with our agreements. I, I sent him something that's pretty much what we think is ready. He's the attorney; he can sign off on that. Um, so I was getting the information uh, from Elizabeth, and uh, and you know, to be honest, it was it was her first grant since she's been here, and it was our first time to to even deal with. Um, infrastructure and facade grants with the uh, downtown and I was out last week um, at a manufacturing trade show so uh, and, and if it you know and Elizabeth can probably answer better than that as far as if, if any of these projects need a quicker time frame you could always have a, a special meeting once we get Jeff sign off just to address these yeah I, I do that that's one of the things that I was going to suggest I think we ought to be, we shouldn't be locked into monthly board yeah. meetings and, and we ought to be nimble enough to have a special meeting you know it, it could be a 30 minute meeting or something I don't want to meet any more often than anybody else does. Yeah, we could have one or two items but, on the agenda but, and knock them out really quick yeah but we ought to and if we're meeting having a lot of special meetings then we got some kind of problem that we need to address but 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 if we need to do that to be more nimble I'm, I'm sure for it question for Elizabeth if we if we don't take these up until next month is that going to delay anybody's actual work or are they already beginning on work knowing that the, the funding's coming the only one that I believe is already trying to start is going to be scooters <coughs> scooters okay. yeah, they would be probably having to, so. if we have to delay it a month I'd have to call them until they have to stop if that's the case with them, I don't think. I don't think they have to stop anything. I mean, it's just it's just going to delay them getting their grant a little bit. And I don't. Then I don't well, think they that don't get paid till after. They don't get paid well, until a certificate well, right. of occupancy so is issued so anyway. So I don't think that would hurt it. It shouldn't right. stop their progress at all. So it would be okay for them to go ahead and start the work process. They. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. yeah I shouldn't. Should then I don't think that'll be an or issue or as long as we're going to move forward. I mean, we're not start funding the startup costs. Yeah, they have to have a certificate of occupancy before we, we start the yeah, process right. for the refund. So do we need a motion to table five through nine? Well, you, I need you to take a one by one. one. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I move to table number five. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. I I'm move six. to table six. Second. There we go. I have a motion and a second to table item number six. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same side. Aye. Motion carries. Aye. Item number seven. I'll entertain a motion. I move to table number seven. Second. Second. Second from Jeff. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same side. Hearing none, motion carries. Item eight, Scooter's Coffee. Entertain a motion to table. Okay, so moved. Second. Jeff. Second from David. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Item number nine, also Scooter's Coffee. This is the uh, facade grant. I'll entertain a motion to the table. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second motion. Second. Second from Melanie. <coughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none, motion carries. All right, thank you. Item number 10, discuss and take any necessary action regarding project PAL, Ms. Dean. Good afternoon. We met in compliance and Project PAL we tabled until next time. There was, um, we think it's a very viable project, but there was quite a bit of information that we needed that was not uh, given to us, so we, we tabled that. Move to table. Have a motion to table item number second. 10. Have a second from Melanie. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Item number 11, discuss taking any necessary action regarding Project Iron Man. Thank you. Um, this is a really exciting project, and this actually, uh, Chris, uh, Mr. Crow actually brought this to compliance. Uh, we had an application, and then he came and explained the project to us. This is, um, is to bring the infrastructure to the property line of the, the new proposed light industrial park consisting of about 72 acres at Parksville. I think you guys probably have the, do you have this? 
So you know, it's it's north <coughs> of Amy. It's in the ETJ, but it's not in the city limits. Amy is the is the edge of the city limits. So um, they were requesting six and a half million. They have estimates, and it looks like it'd be about seven point eight. But they're not requesting seven point eight. They're requesting six point five. So uh, compliance felt like after a good discussion and understanding of what the industrial district, it's not really an industrial park, it's an industrial district, would be that this was certainly what, uh, worthwhile to have to pay to bring that infrastructure there. Of course, my question on that, because I was on council when uh, the county sales tax passed, and you know, so I ask, if this if the city's on board with doing this because at this point anything that they're not running any any infrastructure if they're not going to be able to have it in the city limits but um, mr crow indicated that the city and the county have been talking and that it looks like should this project be funded by odc that the county would agree that any uh, sales tax from retail facilities and there would be some this is light industrial, and there would certainly be at least one or two hotels there that they would be willing to look at, and for this particular project, potentially split the sales tax 50-50 in order to get the city to build that infrastructure. So that was great news to me because I proposed that solution a long time ago, but it's not a blanket solution. It's on a project-by-project -project basis. So. Uh, compliance voted on this and we would recommend that ODC um, make this grant to uh, Parks Bell for the six and a half million. Any questions? I had a question. Uh, did the county meet? Is there a commitment on that? No. South yeah. Tax at this point? No, but I'll catch up a little bit on the county commissioner's court meeting this past Tuesday. Uh, the judge brought that up and the county commissioners wanted to get their attorneys to evaluate what the city's already sent over. Um, they did like the fact that they were presenting a case-by-case -case basis uh, for each project. And then actually, immediately after that, there was another project that came up. Uh, the former mayor of Midland, Jerry Morales, has a project he's looking at that will be in West Odessa that would probably be like tailor-made for this. And so the, the response was that they just wanted a couple weeks to actually look at the the agreement that the city of Odessa had sent over, have their attorneys pour over it, and then hopefully they'll take it up at, at their next uh, commissioner's court meeting. On the next meeting, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Commissioner I, Simmons even said that point. He goes, you know, unofficially, we have that out there anyway, that we'll consider a case by case. They just foregoing that, foregoing that they don't want to give up uh, sales tax, where does that leave the city him being an EJD? ETJ. Um, EJD. If they did not, the county would get 100% of the sales tax for anything in the county. So in this case, this the, this industrial district, any sales tax that comes from that would go to the county 100%. And then that would be a hard decision for the city to make to run that infrastructure without getting any of the sales tax. So. Exactly. Now, and I know I see Councilman Thompson's in the, in the room along with the city manager. I don't know if there's been any talks about the city having to spend any money on infrastructure at this point. I think that uh, at, at this point, <coughs> it's either kind of the developers that may pay any difference that's there. I think there's some other options, but it would be a hard decision if the city had to talk about that. It's an exciting project. Very exciting project. Any motions? I'll make a motion. Second. Make a motion from uh, Dr. Kirk. Second. David? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. No, 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 that's fine. Uh, item number 12, discuss taking any necessary action regarding an engagement letter for audit services by Weaver to conduct an audit of the Economic Development Department of the Chamber. I believe you have the engagement letter in your packet. Uh, Meredith McKeon with Weaver, who is the managing partner who oversees this audit, is here as well to an answer any questions. Um, Weaver has audited the chamber for many, many years. 
and um, audits our three departments, including operations, economic development, and Discover Odessa. You all um, have the document there in front of you regarding the report that you all receive. Um, so any questions that you might have on that? This is basically the same form we had last year, right? Uh, yes. Same contract. Questions? If this is this is the audit of the Chambers Economic Development Department, right? Correct. Why, Correct. Why are we looking at this? Why do we? Why, what is our role? In well, this? so we have the Chamber audit, but then this is um, for you all to receive a report particular to the Economic Development Department. You receive a schedule of support revenues and expenditure as well as a, a schedule of excess and shortage of funds calculation. So chamber board receives a, a report that is com separate. This is something different. Well, I guess here's my question. We require in, the con in our contract that you be audited. Correct. Why do we have to approve your auditor and the engagement letter? I don't, I guess I'm, and I guess, I guess we've been doing it, but it occurs to me, I don't know why we're doing that. What's our, why is that our role? Because we've always we're, done it that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe. We're, 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 we're getting the information. Yeah. Meredith, do you want to speak to the separate report that this... We don't pay for it. Yeah. We pay for it. This is a... This is a... We pay for it, but all of yeah. our contractors audit. We pay for it directly? Okay. We that's do good. that that's for all of our contractors. And this, I believe, is $8,000. It says for you all to get your separate report. They come to the meeting, okay. report to you the activities. That's good enough for me. Meredith, could you find it in your heart to take any less than that? <laughs> That's already a pretty small fee. <laughs> and the chamber pays above and beyond that for the, the overall audit. Right, right. Move for approval. Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. So after the meeting, if I can have your signature, Mr. Crow, and we'll get that rolling. Item number 13, discuss and take any necessary, God, say that three times with this. Take any necessary action regarding an ODC planning retreat in the next two or three months, including a potential date. Um, I asked David to put that on there, just I wanted to kind of get the feel from you guys. That's where you were talked about doing the planning session, kind of taking the morning. But uh, this is going to be just an opportunity to kind of get an idea of your schedules and what might be good in the next few months for us to take a morning. After the first one. And that, that's, that was kind of the main question I, I told Tom about. Did you all yeah, before? How the first to get year, everybody together after the first year? So, I mean, is there, like, is January less busy or February less busy for everybody? We're, we're, just, we're looking to kind of tentatively get an idea so we can figure out where and, and when, and then that way we can really start the planning three years in. I think mid-January, I don't know. I mean, yeah. we got tax time and everything else first year. So okay. I'll be out a week towards the end of January. So that'd be when we want to have it. <laughs> so we have to. I, I, I'm just one vote. Don't knock yourself out. Don't choose January 18th. That's the workforce. Oh yeah, that's the, work, that's the workforce <laughs> session. Okay. So if you so after mid January, so towards mid January into February, is that kind of is that okay if we get some tentative dates for you guys for that? That'd be good. Yeah. This is all we were looking at. It's kind maybe of maybe give us three, the three different options or something like that. Everybody can respond by email that says, I can do this one, I can't do this one, or something I'll like that. I'll be happy to send that email out. Thank you. Okay. We're just looking for a little direction, so excellent. Awesome. All right. Uh, ODC committee and officer reports. So partnership did meet. Uh, had a really good meeting. Uh, <coughs> had some great reports from... Uh, UTPB from Otis College, from the county judge, uh, uh, councilman was there as well. They gave us a good report. Um, hospital district, we, we missed out on a CEO. He was out on a trip as well as uh, Dr. Murray from ECISD, but their staff gave us a great report. To me, everything just looks like the, the, the city and the county are, are moving forward with some, with some good projects. I didn't have anything really meat and potatoes to bring to you that we're working on. Um, but I know Jeff was there, uh, Councilman was there, uh, our city manager was there. If you guys would like to speak, you're more than welcome to. Okay. 
Tax incentive. It doesn't meet the once a year. Excellent. Uh, advertising, I think we got a pretty good update from Christy, but would you like to, you guys would like to speak to anything special? No, we haven't, we haven't met uh, as a committee since last time, but, but uh, Christy and her staff have been doing a great job of keeping everybody up to date on a regular basis. I get, you know, and, and I'm, she sends it out to everybody, you know, Every, every week or two, we get emails, updates. Here's what's going on. Here's what we're working on. Here's what we accomplished. So that's that's uh, that's been very helpful, and we see all their all their hard work. So we appreciate that. I think she's turned into an employee. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Don't let the IRS hear that. <laughs> Downtown Odessa uh, grants for review board. No, nothing new. There's no meetings. We have a great uh, report from Ms. Dean on her compliance. So. I do have one. Oh, yes ma'am, come on. I just wanted to um, let you know that Kaylee Vanda has um, resigned from the compliance. I think she's, is she the, fun new, she's the, the new person starting Monday in the, the finance department at the city. So um, my understanding is that we get applications and you guys vote on them. So just to let you know that we are one short. Thank you. Thank you. Two short. <laughs> Blake Bat is. Oh yeah, Blake Bat. Blake resigned as well. Yes, he resigned. Some time ago. Yeah, I think after the sale, I think he he resigned. Yeah. We had we hadn't had a meeting since July, so that. Had Results from the appointments, so. yeah. You guys have any great ideas? And well, typically, I think, I think what they typically do is try to find replacements and then they come to us with recommendations well, and then we approve it. The, the last couple of times they've had to fill out an application with the city yeah. and then you yeah. guys voted on them as yeah. a, as a yeah. board. Yeah, yeah. But, you, but you do the legwork on it. <laughs> as far as trying to, trying to find yeah. replacements. Yeah. Okay. So if, if any of y'all have a good idea for a compliance committee, or if any of us have a good idea for a compliance committee, we'll get an application and send in so it comes to us. Okay. okay. Item 15, the, the board may recess into executive session in compliance with section 551.001 of the Texas Government Code, but I don't have anything that we're supposed to Go into executive today, unless you guys do. Uh, item 16 would be to reconvene. Item 17, again, this is a public forum, so any citizens' comments on non agenda items are always welcome. Do we have any citizens who would like to make any comments on non agenda items today? All right, seeing none. Uh, looking for an up uh, next date for ODC board meeting, which would be in December. Right now, tentatively, we have it on the schedule for December 14th. Is everybody okay with that? And with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So we have a motion from Dr. Kirk. Second. Second. Uh, Mr. Russell, all in favor, please say aye. 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 We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time.